So welcome all to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call on Wednesday, March 21st. Um, uh, this is Trisha Gordon speaking. I'm at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to be um, conducting a Jira Palooza that Neil Caden is going to lead us through. Uh, before we start with that, I want to open it up to um, any announcements or updates that folks would like to share. Uh, I don't know if this is a great topic for this, but if anyone else on the call has submitted an Aperio uh, proposal that got it uh, accepted, I think we would like to celebrate with you. Um, I, I got one by default, I think. I didn't even submit a proposal, but um, due to circumstances beyond his control, uh, Neil has asked me to do the, uh, the farm proposal that he put in, and I'm excited about that. So if anybody else wants to help me with, uh, with the farm proposal, uh, remembering it's funding and resource management for all Aperio projects, I'd be happy to have some, some help, a co-presenter or so. Hey, Laura, this is Wilma. I, um, I told Neil I would help out with that one too, so. Woot, woot, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Awesome. Uh, oh. Matt Burgess, we got one accepted, didn't we? We sure did. So UVA will be giving a proposal on the current state of the Toolbox Site Builder project, so the project to redesign the site creation and the tool management workflows in Sakai, just a current state of that project, and hopefully some updates and a view of the updated prototype. So we'll be giving a presentation on that. I will also be giving another presentation on some uses of the lessons tool that's based on a presentation that I did from Sakai Virtual Conference. So UVA will have at least a couple. And it looks like Wilma's doing something on lessons also, which is kind of similar to what I'm doing. So that's great. Great. Yeah, Wilma, do you want to talk more about that? Just to get it on the recording. All right, I was busy typing into the chat because I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, the um, the it's it's sort of a boff, but I'm doing it in out of the box um, style. So um, we're going to be talking about lessons and if it it could or should replace some other tools like um, syllabus or blog or other tools that maybe um, don't uh, aren't very current or don't have um, a lot of you know, recent updates and maybe lessons could um, perform some of those functions. So that's one of the ones I'm doing. Um, I'm also, and I was that was what I was busy typing, um, one of the uh, game show hosts for the community presentation. Trisha's on that. <laughs> so we're going to be doing a quiz, quiz game, quiz show. Yeah, you guys will want to come to that one. It is going to be super fun. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. Dee Dee and I are doing one for leading ladies too. I'll let her talk about that one. Go Dee Dee. Have you got your mic on? I think I do. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Wilma and I will be doing a, basically we're going to be asking quite a few people who are possibly even on this call um, to join us and do a, a presentation about how uh, women uh, gain leadership through open source in Aperio and Sky, and how uh, and how you gained leadership that you received here. What what skills did you get? How how did you get to where you are, and and what opportunities did this afford you? Cool. You want to talk about yeah. that other one you recruited me for? That would be that one. <laughs> no, no, no. No, Wait, which one? No, we I don't. Talking about okay. So the idea came up. Uh, and it was Dee Dee's idea. I can't remember what call we were on, but you said, you know, we ought to collect oh. video snippets. Yeah, right? yeah. So oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a video booth. That's a great oh, idea. It is. Uh, Sean Foster from Western Ontario said, you know, that idea um, was taken to the nth level a few years ago in Canada by having a speakers booth in the middle of Toronto that pedestrians just stopped by and they recorded a minute of video and went on. 
Um, so we were searching around for a name for it. And I think we settled on a perio or open soapbox. Yeah, I think that's what we stand. That's what we're at at the moment. Yeah. Um, and it was just, you know, I don't even have a clue yet as to how to set this up or move forward with it. So advice is welcome. Um, and uh, we just it was just an idea to give us, A, it will also give us content to be able to share in the marketing team and across some of our social media channels to show not only on YouTube, but sharing those same videos or snippets and quotes and things that we can use throughout to spice up our, our, our marketing campaigns as well. Yeah, so anybody on this call, if you see this booth and you think, well, I'm not doing a presentation or anything, don't just stop by the booth to say um, it's a great conference, although we'll appreciate those. Uh, but this would be your chance to do a one minute lightning talk on something that you're really passionate about. Think about it. Yeah, we might want to send uh, a prompt or two to, like the Sakai All list or something like that, to um, help people think about what they might want to say um, when they come Good to idea. boot. That I know that would help me to have something a little bit. Yeah, specific. or maybe at the booth there could be sort of a list of yeah. prompts that people I, can I look thinking. at. I was even thinking just on your ideas, what if we had like a, a, a whole bunch of questions in a jar and you had to pick it out of the jar and answer that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you get a do-over if you get one you don't like? <laughs> ah, but you, wouldn't it be fun to record the response when you, you know, when it happens? You know, you open that, you're like, no, I don't want to answer the hat. <laughs> <laughs> now we won't get anybody stepping up, Dee <laughs> Dee. Of course we will. Of course, we, we, we all have a sense of humor, and I'm sure that some of those things would have people cracking up if we can think of some good ones. So yes, any help is appreciated. It was a random idea that I just brought up, and I'm so glad that people are enthused about it. Yeah. Um, I, one other thing uh, before we move on, I want, I'm pasting this link into the chat, and I'll put it on the Etherpad as well. But uh, this is the link to the uh, Louisa's farewell card for people to sign. So if you haven't done that yet, um, it's really easy to do um, and pretty fun. There's a lot of posts already. Uh, so I hope you will take a moment and do that. Well, I'm yeah. still mad at her, only I don't know why. Pardon? I said, I'm still mad at Louisa, only I don't know why. Well, it's not like her fault. <laughs> I don't think. Where is she going? Back to China. Back to China. Oh, that's cool. Visa, visa, right. visa issues. So. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we'll. So it's really not her fault. Okay, I'll sign the card. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You realize this is being recorded, right? <laughs> Louisa, I love you. I love you very much. And I am really glad we got a chance to do an Educause Learning Institute presentation together um, and uh, make place for guests in China because we'll come visit you. All of us. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it needs to be said, I am heartbroken that, Neil, you are leaving the community. And well, maybe you won't be. I don't know. Maybe you'll land somewhere where you'll still be able to be a part of it. And I really hope that's true. Um, but I wanna just thank you for everything that you've done for, for the community. And um, you've been a great partner in so many ways. And I've really enjoyed working with you. Um, you've really enriched us all. Thanks, thanks, uh, Trisha, I appreciate it. And uh, gosh, I really hope I don't know if you can come to Open Imperio, but I just feel like I need to see you in person at least one more time, <laughs> somehow or another. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, thank you so much. I am uh, trying to write plus one, plus one, plus one about a bazillion times and put that in the chat, but it's not letting me. Yeah. Like, Neil. Yeah. Oh, I can do it now. Look at this. I've got rows and rows and rows. <laughs> That's how I feel about you, Neil. Oh my Thanks, God. Laura. 
Okay, so I think we should move on and get to our Jira Palooza. Um, well, there is one we... one other announcement. I oh, bet. I mean, you'll be seeing it in a day anyway. But uh, the uh, Sakai Twelve release will be out. Um, it's already been tagged, so we just need to finish up the final documentation to release it. So that'll be like today or tomorrow, probably. Probably by tomorrow. Yay! We'll have twelve go out. So, yep. So it's not hypothetical anymore. It's not forecast anymore. It's already tagged. So we've okay. we've committed. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I saw one last blocker that came in, and I assume that's getting addressed, right? Yeah, we looked at the blocker. So first of all, after once we've tagged it, it makes it pretty. There's really not much we can do, but we did look at the blocker, and and so the way blockers uh, work. First of all, we we assessed it, and we believe it's more of an internationalization issue, so a little bit more of a critical than a blocker. Okay. And kind of secondly, maybe more detail than, than you want to know, but when we get closer and closer to release, the threshold for what we consider a blocker goes up and up and up. Otherwise, we never get the yeah. release out. And then what will happen is we'll, you know, the community will turn around and start working on 12.1, and some of those issues will become blockers for the 12.1 release, or they'll be reassessed to see if they're really still critical. But yeah, we did look at that issue that came in that was yep. that was labeled blocker. We already looked at that, so and assessed Yay. it. Mm -hmm. Very exciting! Congratulations, everybody. Yep. Okay, so Jira Palooza, Neil, do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, so this is. I'm glad that Laura pasted an issue because this is really for the community, uh, and you are welcome to put in issues that are important to you. In fact, that's, I think, one of the best ways of going through the Jira Palooza. Uh, there is a filter, as Trisha reminded me on Slack, right on the teaching and learning page. Uh, so if you want to go look there. Um, and then as you scroll down, you can click to see all 85 issues that are in there. Um, and there's some that are, you'll notice, are feature requests and some that are bug issues. They all have the same thing in common that somebody tagged them as desiring some input from the teaching and learning group. So we'll start with the one from Laura. And as you all, if you want to take a look at some of those issues and come up with additional issues, uh, that would be super. Sure. So here's um, the one from Laura. Yeah. So I tagged this um, Notre Dame uh, alongside clients and teaching and learning, which I just did mere moments ago, so it wasn't on the list. Uh, but um, just to bring it uh, down to the institutional level, uh, Notre Dame has been talking to LAMP schools, oddly enough, and we discovered that the way that their multi-tenanted tenanted environment works is um, each school that belongs to that single install of Sakai gets to use gets to use a uh, a branding a skin of their own well at Notre Dame we wanted to be able to use a different um, template for each discipline that uses the Notre Dame instance so we contacted Longsite and Longsight said, yeah, sure, no problem. You, you create these and we'll have you uh, control the rules yourself. In, in This is really cool because we control the rules in a Google spreadsheet um, that's published and it's only available to you know, us and, and Longsight. And their script reads it through Google APIs and knows what the rules are so that I can, as an LMS admin, go in any day and say, I've got a new template for a new discipline, and I want it applied to all of our course sites that are created from here on, or are created for this term for pilots. So that was really cool, and I thought, you know, instead of just testing the long site part of it, I really should test what kind of things copy over. And uh, Sam let me know that I could do that with either import from site or duplicate, that if I used those uh, either one of those tools, I would likely get the same results as they get behind the scenes when they apply, when they copy, right? They copy a course that I'm using as a template. It's not a special course. It's just a regular course site. Um, and they copy it over every time they create a site for us. So 
it ended up that I found a lot of issues and I posted them on, um, I think it was the Sakai users list. And then I went up and created this JIRA so that anytime I found an issue, I could link it. And I think, Neil, if you scroll down, you'll see there's a couple things linked right now. Uh, one of them is, um, well, the first, the first one about the duplicate feature is that, as you know, in Sakai 12, we've decided the whole duplicate feature has um, um, performance issues. So uh, if you have a really big site that you're trying to copy, it, it won't behave correctly. You know, your results may vary. Uh, another issue that I found um, in that first comment is that LTI tools can't be part of the default tool set. So you can create a course site to use as a template and, um, and you can add any of the regular Sakai tools, but if you have any plugins, LTI tools kind of thing, they don't get copied over. Uh, so I wanted to give this, um, this issue attention in case anybody else is thinking, well, we use duplicate, we want to copy one by one by one, or we're a long site um, client and we might want to have multiple um, sites configured differently with different colors or uh, um, icons or, even as Wilma was talking about the um, Aperio, uh, Aperio presentation she's doing for lessons, that's one of the things I thought about using in the template, was if I configured a lessons tool with content in it, right? So if I set it up as week one, week two, week three, to give instructors the idea that this would be a good arrangement for your your course site, this would be a template for you, so you don't actually have to create the structure, you just have to fill in the content. And uh, not so much, that doesn't copy over either. Anyway, if um, your institution would like to participate in um, voting this up, in making this a big uh, you know, priority for the community, we, we would welcome that. Uh, we're ra waiting right now. We've asked Longsight to do a quote for us on fixing the LTI issue. Um, so Notre Dame has decided to fund that one specifically ourselves. Thanks very, oh, and also from a teaching and learning um, standpoint, of course, that's this call. Am I on the right track? Is this something that you guys can see would be of value for instructional designers too? Thank you. Yeah. Laura, and at UVA, I think we've solved some of these issues. Uh, I know that at one point we were allowing LTI tools to be copied, for, you know, when sites are duplicated, but we've actually just recently turned that back off. Um, the email archive, we built it in so that that could be edited when the template is used to create a new site. Um, I'm not sure we've addressed all of these issues, mm -hmm. but I'm happy to um, take a look at this and uh, share what we can. That would be terrific because I understand from Longsite that one of the biggest issues is that duplicate and import from site um, as well as the back end process for, for doing all your SIS courses. They evolved independently over time, so they're not even using the same method. So really, you know, from a developer point of view, they'd like to clean up the whole thing so that all of those methods or all of those, I don't, they use the same method on the back end. That's what I mean. Yeah, gotcha. And I believe duplicate, duplicating sites is going to be deprecated at some point, so. It is in 12. Um, it right. is off by default. Uh, we also have a group here, um, a non-academic group, sort of an outreach that offers six weeks paid for courses in theology. We're a Catholic institution and, and this is one of our outreaches to our constituency base. Uh, so they use Duplicate regularly. And when I sent them the message that 12 was gonna be off in Sakai 12, 
which I did tenderly with great love, you can imagine, right? I, I put my bluntness to bed and I did this tenderly. Um, still, it's just, uh, it's a no, no start for them. So Notre Dame will be running uh, duplicate on even in 12. Thank you. I think this definitely qualifies as, I mean, for us, I, I think it's definitely tied to teaching and learning and, and foresight design. So thank you. You're welcome. So back to you, Neil. Okay, back to me. All right, let's see if anyone has filled in the wheel of JIRAs. Yes. Uh, oh, no, somebody just put the link to the filter. So if nobody has that's, a JIRA, yeah. Yeah. what's that? Sorry, yeah, that, uh, that's what that was. Yeah, so I thought I was excited. I thought maybe somebody had put in a link to an actual JIRA. So that's okay. We can go and take a look at that list and pick something from that list. I'm going to go down here. So I'm curious if there's any particular preference between bugs or features. As you know, some of if you, if you notice, some of these are um, issues that have a TL link with uh, bugs, and some of them are features. And Wilma is voting for features. Anyone disagree with that? Otherwise, we can kind of bring this filter a little bit down. Sure. I like the features that we argue about in Sakai in the Sakai Jira, and I'm putting in a plug for that Monday at 2 p.m. meeting uh, when we go through new Jiras. And one of the things we do is we have to identify whether they're a bug or a feature. And believe it or not, it's not clear sometimes. Uh, the reason it's not clear is um, some of us start to say, well, it may work as designed, but we think it was de designed in a way that's not teaching and learning friendly, right? So it becomes a feature request because how it's working currently is as designed, but we want it designed a different way. Yeah, Dee Dee says broken as designed. Good one, Dee Dee. <laughs> Neil, I don't want to wrench the discussion around, but I do want to bring up a new teaching and learning issue that I ran into within the last day, if that's all right. Okay. It's not currently a JIRA and not currently marked, and there may be uh, mass public understanding of this already, but the gradebook NG cannot import a spreadsheet with numbers that include three significant decimal places. So if you have an instructor who's looking to import grades from an external source, if there are too many decimals, those specific grades will fail import. Well, we can see if there is an existing JIRA. If not, it would be good to get a JIRA. And that might be one of those ones where is it a bug or is it a feature question? Well. Um, Gradebook in G doesn't tell you that it can't do that. So in some ways, it may be working as designed, but doesn't inform the user. And I had an exchange with Sam Odenhoff. Sam has actually fixed the problem, but there's not an explicit JIRA for this issue. There are some related JIRAs, and I'll be updating the comments in those related JIRAs and marking them as TNL issues. But I just wanted to uh, bring it out on the open call so that people were at least aware, given that it's midterm time. So is this a feature, did it work differently? What did you use before Gradebook NG? Did you use Gradebook 2 or the, the original Gradebook 1? We used Gradebook 2. Okay. So it worked differently for Gradebook 2. It did accept that. Um, I did not try doing the import in Gradebook 2, but this is the first time that we've run into the issue. Okay. So we're not sure if this is a regression compared to the old uh, Gradebook 1 or Gradebook 2. Well, and regressions compared to Gradebook 2 are difficult to 
address because not everyone used Gradebook 2. So different people had different experiences and you may not even be able to call it a regression. It's just a difference in tool sets. At any rate, um, the problem was fixed and is tracking for 11.5. I just wanted to bring it up to let people know because there have been recent discussions regarding Gradebook NG to, or Gradebook 2 to Gradebook NG transitions and um, wanted to raise awareness. Okay, so if it's fixed for 11.5, most likely it's fixed for 12 because the normal, the normal process is, uh, is to fix things first in master and 12 and then you know, backport to the older branches. Um, it was just fixed within the last day within the last day. Um, and it's also possible that it was never a problem in 12. That's also a potential. Uh, yeah, I do remember some sort of issue that went directly back into the 11 branch. And again, the reason that, that, it's, that things are sometimes done that way is if there's an issue that's not an issue in 12, for example, or 13, then what will happen is they'll create a patch just for the older branch because it's not relevant to the newer branch. So it may be that that's the case. It would be good probably to get that tested in 12 uh, just to confirm that's true, but that's what I suspect, that it's going to work the way we're hoping in, in 12. Okay, thank you for bringing that, that one up. Let's see, coming back here. And there's some questions about do others import and those that are out three decimal play points just don't. That was a question from Laura and Charles is writing. I'm trying to remember if I recall the entire import just fails. Where does the entire import just fail, Charles? Is that on 11? OK. That definitely um, seems like something to check out. When you perform the import, grades with fewer decimal points do import. Grades with three or more fail import and are blank. It may also depend which version you're, of 11 you're on. That's a possibility. Although it sounds like that's the behavior through 11.4 um, from what you're saying. Okay, can we move on to another issue? Do we need more discussion on that one? I think we can move on. All right. Okay, so we have 50 issues that are in the filter that are feature requests, and that's the, that was the request that we focus on features. We have a bunch of Samago features here. Um, and we have others with other components, uh, like uh, site info, several on site info, several on gradebook, portal, calendar assignments, basic LTI, more assignments, syllabus, so what we can do is we can pick something if somebody has a particular tool they would like to look at features on, we can focus on that tool or I'll just pick one, uh, whichever one comes up first. I would vote for either Lessons or San Miguel. <laughs> lessons or San Miguel, okay. Uh, let's do, let's see if there's any Lessons then. The project in... Lesson Builder, San Miguel. And that gets us down to 23 issues. So here I can paste this query in. Somebody wants to run out locally and go through those issues. So let's pick one um, and just take a look. We've done a lot with San Miguel fields lately, so I'm just going to arbitrarily pick a uh, uh, Pick one from Lesson Builder. Maybe we can go back and forth. Um, set a due date for questions within Lessons. Does that sound fine to start with? Or was there some other Lesson Builder one you wanted to particularly look at? Nothing in particular for me. Nothing in particular for you? Okay. All right. Well, in the interest of efficiency, we'll just pick one and we can see see what it is. Feature request from Ben. Our functional users have brought to our attention that it is not possible to set a due date for a question within the Lesson Builder tool. The desired functionality would be able to set a due date for the question within Lesson Builder. 
set a due date for the whole lesson and to be able to set these from within gradebook like the assignments tool has the ability to do. Right now the workaround is that you can make it available to your students and then when you don't want it to be available anymore you can set a don't release until date that's far in the future and that's just a lot of manual work for instructors was their complaint. Ben, I, I'm not sure. Is it possible to have a page in Lesson Builder with the quiz on it, but the page is set to expire? The page you date? can't set the page to expire. You can just make it available at after a certain date. That was what I was talking about. Or set the due date for the whole lesson. I see. Are you talking about the whole page or like the little quiz feature within the page? Um, I think either one would be acceptable. I like this idea. Do you have any idea how big a project it is? Have you had any estimates on this one yet? We have not, actually. Um, I wanted to get feedback from the community and see if other people were interested in it first. Um, and this is the first time I've actually heard back anything from anybody, so. Well, if people are interested. The little Sorry. quiz feature on the lesson page, that goes back to the gradebook, doesn't it? You can put questions in the gradebook, or excuse me, into lessons that feed to the gradebook, but you cannot set a date that they were no longer available. Can you do that in the gradebook? You cannot. And I could be wrong, um, but this is what I was told and what I was seeing. Charles, did you have additional details on this one? I don't actually, but my guess is in, in answer to the other question is you might be able to put in a due date in the grade book, but I suspect not because I think that these things are locked the same way like tests and quizzes items are locked. Um, yeah. And even if you could put a, a due date there, it wouldn't necessarily be an enforceable due date where if it's past the date, they can't do it anymore, which I think is the entire functionality that we're looking for here. I'd like to see this myself. This is Terry Golightly. Okay, I will work on getting an estimate um, if other people are interested in seeing this and if this is something that we'd like to pursue. Um, yeah, Matt Burgess said in the chat that more functionality in lessons is a good thing. And right. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a good a good feature to add. And I'll go ahead and channel Neil Caden just briefly here because I know what he's thinking right now and say that, you know, for those of us who like this feature and are interested in it, please make some comments in the Sakai project here because that's really the important place where a lot of people see these comments and can gauge the interest of the community. So check that out. And Thank I'm going to. Great suggestion. <laughs> And I'm going to channel I'm going to channel Laura Geckler and and think about how how things how as we uh, look in new features how they fit into the manifesto. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to mention the manifesto. I'm presenting on that at Open Aperio, so stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. So does anyone want to channel somebody else now before we move on? <laughs> We've had two channelings. 
can channel me to move us along. All right. Let's see. I see some uh, some issues were oh was those were those the issues related to uh, the grade book? It looks like we're pasted and thank you for that. Um, so it doesn't look like any issues additional issues have been uh, requested. So uh, maybe somebody can channel Dr. Chuck. His big topic this day these days is the Sakai logo. Right. Yeah, that's true. All right, so I'm going to move on and, and flop over to Samigo, uh, since that was the request, uh, looking at Lesson Builder and Samigo uh, new features. Um, soft delete for published exams. So this is uh, Sam 3237. And feel free to paste these into the chat or into here. I meant to do that with the last one, too. I don't think it did it make it in. You did. Yeah. Lesson build the lesson builder one did? I don't see it. The link to it? Yeah. You did. Yeah, it's already I made it into the chat, but I meant into the notes, into the meeting notes. Oh, not oh, notes. So, oh sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant. I can do that. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's good to keep a record of, of what we talked about. And we also should think about whether we want to keep the TL labels on these things or if we have enough discussion to just remove them so that we otherwise the TNL will just keep growing and growing and growing and won't be as useful. That makes sense. So something to think about. So this one, Sam thirty two thirty seven, Sam ago soft delete for published exams with users able to restore. Well, yeah. so this is kind of interesting in how we discuss Jira's one at a, one at a time, and and I suppose we could create a hierarchy of things that we'd like to see happen. Um, but this goes on, who is it? It's Miguel <coughs> Pellicer, <coughs> excuse me, who's, um, who's doing a redesign of the um, front screen for Samago, especially the notion of working copies versus uh, published copies. Uh -huh. So this, that may render this JIRA um, obsolete. Well, that would be great. I think yeah, I pasted in the other one. He just put out a new um, Jira regarding the working copy, published copy thing. So I pasted that one in to the notes. Is that three three seven nine? Yep. That was something that we discussed at the UX call, and that was, and he opened a new Jira because it was a little outside the scope of the current project. So removing the working copy once. An assessment is published just to reduce confusion so it's a published copy but what happens if just do published copies not have a delete option well that would um, it would basically it would act like an assignment acts when you have a draft and then you publish it it becomes the published and then right. um, you know if you need to edit it uh, you open it back up and, you know, it, it can go back to draft if you need it to. So it would, it would be a step toward creating consistency to make it behave a little more like that to the end user. Um, so that there's only one item that a user has to interact with. Um, this is part then, of the page redesign, right, to make it look yeah. more like the assignments tool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you know the remember the Jira on that? I saw that going by for sure. Uh, I think there's a yeah, Jira. Yeah, it, it. I pasted yeah. it in. Is it Perfect. In this Jira? You're on. Yeah, you were on the other one. It's three three seven nine. Three three seven nine, and that's kind of related to this three two three seven uh, one above here. So maybe just move that over. I don't know if they're really related. Well, I think Laura was saying that hers, the 3237, might be rendered obsolete by 3, two, or I'm sorry, the first one that she mentioned about the uh, soft delete might be a moot point if the draft or working copies are deleted when a public, an assignment, assessment is published. I'm, I'm not sure that's true because 
even in assignments, you can remove an assignment with submissions, can't you, or not? That's the you, issue. With you can't remove a you can't remove a published assessment if there are submissions, unless you go in and like delete one by one all the submissions. Then you can delete it. Oh, my my point more is. Uh, go ahead. I'm, I'm, are you certain that you cannot delete an assessment with with um, submission? Yeah, I think there's a I think there's a property where you can override that. So the default property is you cannot. Uh, and if it was important, I could try and find it, the property after the meeting. But um, I think there's a property uh, in default, you know, in Sakai.properties properties file. So the D and I believe the default for that property is that you cannot um, delete uh, a, an assignment that is it an assignment or is a is it a test and quiz? Uh, I think it was. I think it's a test and quiz. I'm looking at uh, nightly. I think I'm looking at Sakai 12 on nightly and. There is a, I'm looking in a site that has a published assessment and tests and quizzes with one submission and the remove option is there. Which server specifically? I'm sorry, which server? Um, yeah. It was uh, the regression I-12. The RCO5? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Okay, I'm looking in the properties there. Um, okay. Yes, the proper. So if you look to the right, there's a properties link. And if you go to the bottom, do you see what I'm saying? If you go to nightly, here, I'll show you. Um, no, I got it. Yeah, okay. but I thought I'd show everybody. So if you go, if you look here, there's the properties on the right to the right of the server. And if you click that and go to the bottom, it's this property right here. So that by default. Restricted? Yep. And by default, that's true, meaning that, that you cannot. Not that is hmm? not the same thing. It's not? No. That's, no. That allows for um, an instructor or denies an instructor's ability to edit an assessment after submissions have been made. It has nothing to do with whether or not you can remove the entire assessment. As far as I know. Yeah, it does look like it applies to the ability to edit published assessments right. and maybe with with or without uh, submissions. No, it, it is definitely tied to whether or not there are submissions. So if there are submissions, then that property applies. Mm. If it's, you know, so if it's restricted, if it's set to true, then it is restricted and you cannot edit the assessment after submissions occur. And this is, this is a really good illustration of how complicated um, tests and quizzes is and how these properties interact with each other for our individual instance um, configuration and how when we discuss a feature, we have to look at it in its entire context. Uh, so, so right now, I don't even know it's, if it's valuable, and this was the point I was making earlier, I don't even know if it's valuable to discuss the Samago Jiras until we do the redesign of the screen that's ongoing yeah. at the current moment and look yeah. at now in the new context, how do these things play out? Yeah. Context is king, guys. Every writer knows that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you make an excellent point, Laura. So, um, uh, but I did just want to make it clear that I don't think any of that is going to affect this particular JIRA 3237. Um, oh. when you can delete a published assessment that has submission. I don't think I don't think that is going to be addressed by anything. But currently, currently you can remove an assessment with submissions, correct? That is, 
And and the problem is, and that's totally fine unless you want the submission results somehow and you accidentally did that, as has happened here at UVA, and then the developers have to go in and try to restore the, get the submission out of the database for you. Right, that's so it's really more of like a trash or, you know. Yeah, a soft delete, as is yeah. the term we're using elsewhere, so yeah. Something that can be restored by the instructor, hopefully. So, so anyway, mm -hmm. um, yeah, clarifying that. Okay. So we've got 12 minutes. I don't know if we have time to dive into another JIRA or not. It, does somebody have one they they really want to um, talk about right now? And if not, I was uh, I would just like to ask if people will be willing to give me uh, just five minutes to touch on a particular aspect of the release notes um, and get feedback. Yeah, please do. Okay, it should be really, I think, fairly quick. Um, let's see, go to Confluence here. So the way the release notes are organized is the same way as uh, Sakai 11 release notes were organized. You try to keep it really simple. So there's a main page um it has a little bit about about a length of the technical release notes it's very prominent and then just a, a summary of features some and it's not covering every feature but some of the more um impactful ones or one of the ones that have been highlighted more in um, our sakai 12 story that we've developed over the course of the release and then there's a complete feature summary which has detailed it has it broken down by uh, feature by component like assignments, same go tests and quizzes. So if you wanted to go into a particular tool and see, uh, you know, review those for yourself, you can find whatever level of detail you needed. So high level and detail. But the piece that I really wanted to get some feedback on is that within the technical release notes, uh, there are there's a section called README, and it occurred to me that README, because it's buried in the technical section here. Uh, you might not think to look at it if you were just looking at it things from a functional perspective, but really I could imagine this section being very valuable from a change management perspective. Uh, this is where we have things, um, I think I have the duplicate, is that right? Yeah, so here's um, highlighting several issues. As we mentioned, dupl duplicating sites is disabled by default. It talks about the major change of the assignments area and that site archive may no longer be compatible between Sakai 12 and earlier versions. So a lot of useful information here, I think that would be important even for people who are more on the functional side to understand and start thinking about change management and giving them a little bit of a heads up. So, uh, so that was my main question is should the, that this readme uh, area somehow be referenced from the functional area um, or is it sufficient to reference it and it does go into quite a bit of detail as you can see so it also has things like the properties that have changed in Sakai 12 um, and then some stuff that's been around for a while so Trish is saying yes please link to it okay yeah I think that is a really good um, very helpful documentation for functional folks so absolutely that that would be great sure okay i'll do that did he have uh asked the other question is how did you pull all that together <laughs> yeah so there's a there's a several different things that i did to pull this together and of course there's possibilities that i miss some things but that's also why uh we have that page um going back to the functional release notes where if you're in a particular tool and kind of assessing a particular tool, it might be worthwhile to get into some detail uh, and look at the features that are that are there. Um, oh, 
Oh, okay. Right. You might say, okay, we're really thinking about how assignments change. So maybe it's worth looking at all 13 new tasks and features that have gone into the assignments tool, for example. But how I pulled that page together, uh, the main couple of ways that we did that, that I thought were pretty successful, and we'll see when people start applying Sakai 12, if that is the case, is that as we were doing Jira triage, uh, if there was a major change that um, I thought was potentially important for documenting, I'd simply use a documentation label on the JIRA, and I also encouraged the um, QA and the development team to use that label. Um, and so then I went through and I simply did a search for uh, label equals uh, documentation and effects version is 12 or something like that. And then as I went through the documentation and captured that piece of documentation, I would remove that label so that I could see it go the number of issues going down. That was the main way. Plus, I went back and looked at uh, the, you know, it's a combination of that. That was the most methodical approach that, that um, we used in terms of capturing documentation issues. I admit there may be things where I was aware of things from my role that I said, oh, I, I don't see that. Maybe I need to, to, to research it a little bit and pull it in. Um, or from the Sakai story that we developed over time uh, and kind of double checking that Sakai story, which was uh, listed in some of the, um, the email lists. And the reason Terry duplicating is turned off is because of performance concerns. Yeah. And so if we ever got those, if the community wants duplication turned back on, then they would need to uh, figure out how to get that fixed. The Sakai story is essentially the new features now in the release notes. So this I went a combination of, and I'm happy to, if it would help, I can also put links to different things, um, like where the Sakai story is in the email um, the email threads that we had, the Sakai 12 straw person that we created in Confluence and that we used to reference back several times. So there's some different sources of information, but I'm hopeful that I distilled most or all of that here on this fun on this page. I think there may be several institutions that may be going to 12 pretty soon, uh, but I'm not sure that I know for, for certain. Right, you can import a site from the, from the old site. And you can also turn on that's a property, so you can turn on duplicate. So if you're willing to take the risk of uh, the performance hit, then you could turn on du the duplicate in the properties and, and use it. Or you could turn it on for a certain period of time, duplicate and turn it off. Well, I'm glad so, I got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. That's really helpful. And uh, so let's go ahead and segue to, we do need to talk about future topics for future meetings. Uh, we have none scheduled. And so on Etherpad, let me copy and paste that again. I have the date open and um, listed there that are upcoming. And I just entered, do we want to talk more about the changes that are uh, coming in 12 in an upcoming meeting. Uh, do you want to review those a little bit more in depth? Uh, that could be a topic. And then if anybody else has any other topics that um, they would like to address in a future meeting um, and you want to chime in right now or you can write to me or Matt Burgess. Um, let us know if you have a topic you want to cover. Thank you, Matt. I'll type my address in as well. Because I'm the only Tricia at the University of Virginia. <laughs> no, I just happened to get the alias first. Um, so uh, Sakai 12 changes, I don't know if, um, if Neil, you would be willing in the, on, in the April 4th meeting to help us go through that, uh, or if we should try doing that on our own. Uh, just wasn't sure what 
what your availability is. Well, I'm, I'm around till April uh, 30th, and my plan is uh, to, of course, I want to get 12.0 out, and I anticipate helping with 12.1 as well so we're getting 12 die right now and i'm working on uh helping with whatever's needed in terms of a transition plan um that the pmc will be leading and uh and then of course i'll be spending some time looking for my next my next uh thing right. so right so can can we put you down to help lead us through the t uh, review of the kai 12 changes sure on before Awesome. Yeah, Thank I can put together uh, maybe a quick outline of, and then see how folks feel oh, about that'd it. That would be great. That would be really helpful, I think. It's all excited about it, um, if we're not already. So, so we have April fourth, and please, folks, um, send Matt or I or me an email if you have other uh, topics that you want to cover. Anybody have anything else they want to add before we adjourn? Um, I guess I'm thinking about, um, you know, and I appreciate all the, uh, I appreciate all the appreciations and, and warm feelings about my uh, imminent uh, departure from my role. Um, and I'm just thinking about uh, that a little bit. So I may have more, but I, I don't know what to say right now. I do, do appreciate it. It, it does, uh, feel good to hear that um, and uh, I don't know just thinking about about what would be a way to make this transition part of the transition I think is emotional and how to make that the best possible experience and authentic experience for all of all of us the whole community and um, yeah. so that's something I think about a road trip we come we all get on our in our cars and we come down to your house and <laughs> order pizza and beer well, I'm not a big uh, beer drinker, so uh, maybe we can do uh, juice or something. Well, I guess pe beer beer does go good with pizza, though. I could I can make an exception. Yeah. Or chai and croissants. <laughs> There's some good bakeries in, in this area. Oh, ginger ale, yeah. <laughs> and we have to do karaoke, of course. Well, you know, we are we are. Um, uh, and I think this this group would be a good one. Once uh, once you kneel and the PMC kind of gets the list of your responsibilities together, um, you know, you do a whole lot for us. A lot of stuff behind the scenes that we we don't oh even know about. We don't even know. I know, and it's it's almost panic mode. It's like who's going to put the recordings up? <laughs> who's going to do this? Right. <laughs> you know. So there's a lot, Neil, that we know that you do, and and I, you know, hopefully we can fill your shoes. Although I have my doubts that we can do this job as well as you have done it. So it's going to be tough. Yeah, that. yeah, I hear that. I think it is helpful to have a central point of coordination. Maybe, maybe at some point you can get that back. At, I do think there are a lot of talented and energetic people in the community. So I'm hopeful that. A large amount of it will be, you know, doable. Um, yeah, not not necessarily good. easy, but doable. Yeah. yeah. Do you see what that cheeky Laura Sierra just put in the chat? No. He'll be glad to leave the community when we're done with him. So. <laughs> we have our, we wow. have our expectations there. She's putting it out there. You you tell us what you do, and um, and we'll start dividing the pie to the best of our ability. Yeah, yeah, wait, Neil did that. <laughs> uh, I've already started a, a list, and as I think of new things, I'll do my best to think of all the, the different pieces. Some of them may be hard to represent, right? Because so, right, there's certain right. pieces of communication that are more organic, of things that happen that I notice, and I say, oh, I wonder if I should maybe reach out this person and connect them with that group or that person, right? That That's harder to quantify. Mm -hmm. But at least the pieces like where information flows, like that we have, for example, an info, it's a Kai project.org that first goes to Michelle Hall, and she triages a lot of those. She works, um, uh, you know, as a contractor for Aperio, and then sends on certain ones to me, and then I sometimes triage them and sometimes, you know, so I at least I'm capturing some of those, you know, inputs. Because yeah. they don't come from they don't come from magical spaces. They usually come through email or a, you know web query or things like that. Yeah. yeah. And who's going to manage the mailing list? And oh, so yeah, much. yeah. 
Yeah. At least we're on a pretty solid ground in terms of the mail. It seems like the mailing lists are working pretty good for us. I, I yeah. But transitions are hard too. Like the thing that I did with uh, exploring the transition to Atlassian, uh, to Atlassian host to Jira and and mm -hmm. Confluence, which we, we then decided we didn't weren't going to do after a ton of work. Like there's not going to be somebody to put in a ton of work to do that research to to you know figure that out right to help figure the community right. get the information it needs so because there were some things i wanted to do still uh for example around documentation i know we're a little couple minutes over time but um you know like i really thought we were getting very close to community consensus around using github wiki to move a lot of the documentation over or at least the um at least the technical documentation and wilma and i had uh started a kind of a structure of how we thought documentation overall could be organized. So I was really hoping to make progress on things like that. Those things I think are a little harder, you know, where you need, you do need some, yeah. some central point to keep it moving forward. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. going to be tough. I know that. Mm -hmm. But like I said, there's, there is some core, there is still the possibility of getting some coordination resources, but that's also an Ian thing in terms of budget and kind of stabilizing the budget. Right. Right. Okay, but I, I hear yeah. the concern, and I, I do wish yeah. the community well. And yeah, there's always the chance that I could get some position where I'm still involved in some capacity. But at this point, it's far too early to, to say. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, um, on that note, we're going to adjourn. And, and thank you again, Neil, for all that you have done for us and so much that we don't even know that you have done. And um, uh, we're glad that you're still going to be around for a little longer. And we look forward to seeing you and everybody um, on April 4th. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Take Bye, care. Bye, everybody.